When Republican Senators Jeff Flake and Bob Corker turned their retirement announcements into a Trump takedown, Democrats, never Trumpers, and pundits couldn't get enough. But admiration is a fickle thing. Many are now whining that the senators are giving up, that they're mercenary, that they should have done it sooner. Why is it that Republicans only speak up against Donald Trump when they know they're not running for re-election? They finally grow a set, then they say, I'm taking my and going home. Some of that backlash is warranted, definitely. But we should actually be celebrating the senators' willingness to reconsider tough decisions and change their minds. Do you regret supporting him in the election? Uh, well, let's just put it this way, I would not do that again. These are the qualities of a reasonable person in a pluralistic society, and they're in short supply today. A new book called How to Think by Alan Jacobs makes that clear. There are genuine reasons why it's difficult and unusual to change your mind, even when the facts on the ground change, or when your understanding of them finally catches up to what's really going on. First reason, sunk cost. Both senators have sunk years into the Republican Party and months either defending or tacitly supporting Trump. It's the cost of career advancement. And changing your mind is like leaving money on the table. Second reason, loss of membership or a sense of community. Yes, the two senators will get to skip Senate lunches with Mitch McConnell. Hooray! But giving up the identity and community makeup of being senators, Republicans, even just DC in-groupers, that's a huge loss. Okay, so it took not running for re-election to give Flake and Corker the courage to publicly change their minds. Yet we should still cheer their willingness to recognize and stand up for a greater good than passing tax reform. That of a healthy democracy and an America with a conscience. This congratulation is definitely still conditional. And it depends on what the senators do next. But forcing the senators to grovel and apologize for having thought Trump might one day become presidential, or demeaning them because they didn't change their minds fast enough, that risks making us the same close-minded, vengeful types we criticize. In this polarized and bullishly unthinking period of time, let's at least be a little open to celebrating the good.